Hey guys, different video here today. No fast forwarding, no background music. It's going to be me talking, which is, I know, completely different, crazy. I wanna talk real quick. We got different types of vinyl, how it can apply to woodworking and woodworking projects. Um, I'm pretty sure that nobody's ever done a video on YouTube that has anything to do with vinyl and woodworking in the same thing. So that's why I'm doing this. Um, shout out to Chris Salamone and the Modern Makers podcast. Um, this past week they talked uh, a little bit about having vinyl incorporated into their woodworking projects and Chris was wanting to make use it for some drawer faces and was wondering elements of the different types of vinyl and how it can apply and what's good, what's bad. We're gonna mix it all together, I'm gonna ball it up and I'm gonna try to put it on the camera. So, here we go. So we got part one, cut vinyl. Definitely either seen it or knows what it is. Um, you have your hobby cutters like the Cricut. Basically, different types, colors, grades of vinyl. Has a little plotter, cuts out the design, put the masking on it, peel it off, put it on your car. That's cut vinyl. Stuff is very durable, very easy to work with. All kinds of different choices as far as colors and stuff. And I really think that this would be um, a great choice um, for woodworking stuff and I'll explain why here in just a second when we get to the other part as far as car wrapping vinyl and the different options for that. So car wrap vinyls, whether they're printed or whether they're just the uh, pre-printed or the different colors, kind of like the cut vinyl, car wrap vinyls are different in that they are made to obviously go around contoured curves a lot more. So, you know, such a fender, fenders on a car. And then they also have different types of adhesive that help with the installation of that that I think may or may not help as far as applying vinyl to wood and get it, getting it to stick long term. The Aerogress, as they call it, a repositional adhesive that 3M um, Control Tech has, it has like a really fine, almost like cross-hatched grid surface on the back of it, and, it has a, and it's gray. And what that's designed to do is when you're applying that vinyl to a car, my piece here's my piece when you have an air aggress vinyl with that on the back when you have your smooth surface for your car and you're applying it to because they have such big sheets and then when they lay it on the car it's just stuck and then you know you're screwed after that so the air aggress helps prevent that so you can lay that across the surface and as you can see it it's not going to stick at all that's where the term pressure sensitive comes in you put pressure on it and then it's stuck, pressure sensitive. So you can line it up, pull it up, line it up, pull it up. Now, they do have the car wrap vinyl that is not air aggress. And that would be like this stuff. And it's essentially the same, dip, same thing. It's a cast vinyl that still does contoured curves and everything um, really well. And of course we work on flat surfaces for a drawer face or anything that has to do with um, a woodworking project. It just doesn't have that Aerogress repositionable adhesive in it. So once it's stuck, it sticks, re sticks really good. Okay, next to let you know, there are places um, that you can get this stuff in small quantities. Uh, most higher end wrap suppliers, you're able to buy just about any of the car wrap films that they offer by the square yard. That way, when you get it, you know, for some reason you don't like it or it doesn't work out, you're only out a square yard. You're talking $12, $15 tops plus a little shipping. So, okay, so after briefly telling you some of the best places to go to get the vinyl, um, let me show you some of the, some experiments that I did so you can see how different things affect the vinyl as far as um, some different finishes that might be put on wood um, and if it would affect your decals or not. Decals that I have on here, um, the top three, the ones that are my logo, are car wrap equivalent vinyl that has been laminated. And then the bottom three are still the same vinyl, but have, has no laminate on top of it. And I basically just, for myself and, you know, to show you guys, I wanted to see what the heck this stuff would do when you sprayed it with different kind of solvents or wood finishes. So. I try to stay with the pretty common. Um, the first one here is just plain old, actually I'll put this, put them out here. The first one, just 
clear spray lacquer. And I wasn't nice about applying this stuff. I literally just doused it on here. I didn't really worry about cleaning it off or anything. I just doused that lacquer on here and it turned out actually way better than I thought. Um, it doesn't, it didn't curl any of the edges. It didn't soften the vinyl. It didn't discolor it or anything like that. Um, it laid down really smooth. Um, and like I said, I'm, I'm super impressed with how, with how it worked out. The second one, water-based poly. Um, I think this one had a little bit of dirt on it or something. It's really glossy, obviously, but um, it's kind of bumpy from some of the dirt, but the same result. Um, no curling in the edges, um, didn't affect the adhesion, um, didn't distort the colors or anything like that, so we're good there. The third one is cheap clear spray paint. And to be honest, I really thought that the edges of this one would probably curl, um, but they didn't. It actually, there was dirt in the poly, but other than that, it actually turned out better than the, the poly did. And then, to my surprise again, the ones that are not laminated, I guess just because this is good quality vinyl, but the lacquer, the poly, and the clear, the clear spray paint, they all, they all did fantastic. None of them affected the decals negatively at all. So if you did apply these to wood and kind of went over them with a, a finish like this, I think it would really help in keeping the corners from getting pulled up over time. Um, and especially if you had the vinyl applied to the edge, um, like a face or a cabinet or something, if you had that finish on there, it's gonna keep that edge from picking um, over time and then it peeling up and then it, then it looking like crap, so. Okay, the last thing I wanted to do is actually apply a piece of vinyl to wood and kind of show you some real quick tips and tricks on how to make it look as, as best as possible and then try to keep you guys from maybe having some issues as far as applying it yourself. So I have, this is basically just some cheap cup vinyl, um, but all the applications basically work the same. The best way to apply vinyl, whether it's in huge sheets or in small pieces, even fairly small decals, the best way to not only get them straight, but to keep from having a bunch of bubbles in your vinyl is to do what's called the hinge method. Um, and the hinge method is a little more difficult on smaller pieces that you're attaching it to, because what the hinge method is, is you are to put the vinyl over the piece you're applying it to. You put a piece of painter's tape across the middle to hold it down so it doesn't move. And then what we do is we fold, fold it back halfway as a hinge, you know, kind of like the name that I came up with. Not really. And then you take the vinyl off of there and you would pull it back to where the tape was, but because we don't have tape here, we're not using that. And then you cut the backer away and then when the backer is cut away, I'm basically just holding this with one finger and then I'll push just in the middle there to get it stuck down. And it really helps to have an actual um, a, a vinyl squeegee. The whole credit card thing, eh, it, I mean it works okay, but if you're gonna do this that you want it to look its best, really spend the three or four dollars and get an actual vinyl squeegee. This has a, a felt sleeve over it that helps keep from scratching the vinyl, which helps a lot too. So. I basically started just lightly rub that with my fingers so that it sticks and then kind of let that droop down. Don't pull it tight because if you pull it tight, you're going to get a wrinkle in it. You let that droop down, push pretty hard, swipe that across there. And then what, that does a couple of things. Once that's swiped across there, it's stuck down on that side so you can't get it crooked anymore. That's why the hinge method works so well. So half of it is complete. So then we can just fold this part over peel this side off, the same thing. I just have it with one finger, but even if it was a bigger piece, um, you know, if you had a piece like this and you were doing the hinge method, it's the same thing. You can hold it, you know, kind of spread your fingers apart and hold it the same way. You don't want to pull it tight. It doesn't need to be pulled tight. Hold that with your finger. And then another thing, you also want to make sure your vinyl is cut bigger than the piece you're applying it to. So you, you want to be able to go back and trim it off. You don't want to have to try to line up all the edges when you're applying it. So the same thing, we go across here, pushing pretty hard, and then start, you know, kind of from, from the middle and push out, from the middle, out, middle, out. Um, and then as you can see on this piece, um, and this is very important to remember, vinyl will not cover up anything. Um, any, you know, defects in the wood, knots, or 
dirt that you left on there or something that you missed when you sanded, vinyl will show everything. Um, I've heard people say, you know, like they're going to put a vinyl wrap on their car because their paint looks bad. Well, the vinyl is going to look bad as soon as you put it on there because it'll telegraph everything below that vinyl is going to look worse through the vinyl. So as you can see on here, you can see exactly where that little knot was and you can see, you can actually see the wood grain in that wood telegraphing through that vinyl. And it doesn't matter if it's laminated, not laminated, whatever kind of vinyl it is, it's going to do that. So after we have that applied, we can turn that over and with a very sharp razor blade, you don't want a dull one because a dull one's just going to mess it all up. Cut that around there. So after we have that trimmed, um, you can see as long as you have a sharp razor blade, the edges are going to be nice and crisp and it will adhere very well. And that will actually be very well. Here's I got, I'll put another kind of vinyl on the back earlier, but uh, that works really well. The only thing you have to remember, these edges, although this stuff is adhered really well, um, the edges are the most fragile part. And you're almost always going to have to do something to keep those edges stuck down because over time, you know, if this was a drawer and you're, you know, years and years, you're pulling on that, the edge of the drawer, whether it's on this side or the bottom or the top. You don't have to touch it very much and then that's going to start to roll back and as soon as it starts to roll back it's done you got to start over there's no way you can get it stuck back down so there's a few things you can do um at a bunch of vinyl wrap suppliers they have these uh edge sealer vinyl graphic pins um they they are potent the smell um and i'm pretty sure you know it's it's a mix of ca glue and some other things that are similar to that but basically what it's for is along the edge of vinyl you can take this pin and run it along there and it works it's like a works like a paint marker basically and I don't know if you'll be able to see this on camera but you can see the adhesive stuck down on there and this stuff works really well once that dries and you can make sure it's not on your face and wipe it off a little bit if you have to with the rag before it dries but once that dries, that basically creates a little buffer there between this piece of the wood and the edge of that vinyl. So as you pull across there, you're not going to pull on the edge of the vinyl. So that's one way that could work really well. Another way is the actual laminate that's used on printed vinyl. This stuff is super durable. And you could apply this the same way that you applied the vinyl. Probably want to take a little more time than I am, but and then fold it over the edge of the drawer. Obviously, you you could trim the back, but let's get that piece off of there. Once you do that and have that sealed. This is gloss vinyl, so it's obviously gonna leave a glossy finish, but the, you can get matte, uh, sorry, laminate, gloss laminate, you can get matte laminate, and that's obviously gonna create a barrier that you also can't pick the edge of that off of there with. So this could also be a really good option to keep those edges from peeling up and protect the face um, a little bit more. But like I said, I don't care for the gloss. Um, you can get matte laminate. So. You could use the laminate as far as you know a double protection or something like the seal pin to go along the edge. I think they're both great options. So in combination with those, I basically made up a few on different types of wood here. This is just some cheap pine that we apply to. Um, this is some nice like gold leaf type vinyl, cheap sanded plywood that it's applied to. Some silver metallic vinyl on MDF. Uh, here's some hardwood. This is some uh, sycamore that did some fluorescent vinyl on, which laid down really well. It works really well on hardwoods. But you can see it, it works really well on any type of wood. So um, as long as you're careful with the way that you apply it, a um, couple things you want to make sure of, of course, you know, 
blow it off with air and make sure that it's as clean as possible. And not so much with the MDF, but with the hardwoods and the plywoods, you want to be sure that it's sanded. Um, I sanded these up through 220 to make sure that surface was as smooth as possible because if it's really rough, um, it'll stick for a while, but chances are, especially around the edges, it's going to start to peel up a bit. Um, but other than that, um, that's really all that you need to do to make this work out and really add some cool effects to different woodworking projects. So thank you guys for watching this video. As anybody that follows me knows, uh, this is a new thing for me. I usually don't say more than a couple of sentences on camera. Um, so a official how-to video is really different for me. So please leave a like. Uh, also leave a comment if you have any other questions or if you'd like to see more videos like this. And until next time, guys, thanks.